it sounded a good idea at the time when I when I was asked about it, and then I saw I saw Liverpool's team, and you know Fernando Torres is just retired and Garcia and people like that. And I'm thinking oh, it's going to be a wee bit more difficult than I thought. But um, no, it's um, Liverpool play a lot of the legends games. You know, I mean our our club at the moment we don't play as many of the legends games as uh, as as they do. Um, but I said to to Mark Haley, who was who was you know who had a lot of the organisation of it, saying, um, "I hope we've got a good team because I mean, I think people from my generation, from from my team, I think I'm the only one who can still maybe run around a wee bit, you know." Um, but then Mark showed me our team, and it's it's a pretty it's like Alan Hutton's involved and uh, Carlos Quella and Clint Hill and people like that, so. They've also just retired as well, so I'm thinking, oh, that's okay. So maybe the first 10 minutes I'll go on or something, you know. But um, I think it'll be good for, you know, the last one, a big one like this I played in was um, we played against AC Milan and then we played against um, Manchester United, you know, in, in one of the big ones. And it was a great crowd. And I'm sure, you know, because a lot of people, I found my son up in Dundee. Oh, he phoned me. He said, oh, "You're coming over, Dad, for that Legends game." I says, "Yeah, are you gonna you're gonna come down?" He says, "No, but three of my mates want to come down and watch Liverpool play." So I was like, "Oh, well, at least there's a there's a there'll be a lot of support, you know." It's always the same these games that that, that you think that you go off with the intention of ah, it's nice and easy, nice to see you guys, and then but after five minutes, the um, the clinical head the the um, you know, it comes back. The competitive edge comes in again, and you don't, you don't play for Liverpool or Glasgow Rangers without being a competitive player. I've always thought, so that, you know that comes into being, and you, you don't want to get beat. So um, I watched the game. It was actually on YouTube last night. I watched a little game on their legends against Bayern Munich legends. It was like five five or something. It was good, and it was a good game, pretty good game, and pretty pretty quick. So if you if you say I'm looking forward to it, I am, but I'm not as well. <laughs> then when you look at the manager, um, what do you make of his progression in year two thus far um, compared to what what we saw last year as a manager and, and you know and uh, dealing with look Stephen Stephen's Stephen's been great Stephen's been fantastic for the football club um, you know he'll have learned a lot last year. Um, and he's still learning. You know, people of his generation, you look at, you know, Lampard going into a Chelsea job, which is a big job down there. Stephen coming up into this job, which is also a, a huge job. Now, whether, whether, you're, whether you're in England managing Manchester United or one of the big clubs down there, <coughs> this is the same. Glasgow Rangers, managing Glasgow Rangers is the same, same situation because it's a, it's a big, it's a huge football club. So... Solskjaer at Manchester United will have the same problems that Steven Gerrard's going to have here because he has to win all the games. You know, so you know you can see Manchester United at the moment not winning all the games. People are asking, when is he going to get sacked? When's, when's this going to happen? You know, so Gerrard, although it's a, a smaller league at the moment, you know, it's not as it's not as maybe a competitive as league. Mind you, you can say that with the English league is only going to be competitive this year with Manchester City and, and Chelsea. It looks like. So the quality of the league isn't the, the same. The problems at the big clubs are the same. You know, whether it's Rangers, whether it's Celtic, you know, like our two big clubs, it's going to be the same problems as England's big six clubs, where they have to get to a certain level, you know. Um, so the job that Gerard's done at our football club has been, um, it's been, been a terrific job, you know, and he's, he's brought in quite a number of players, but... Um, you know he's done a fantastic job, and I just hope that uh, you know you know I've said to him as well personally as well that I, that I hope he's here for a you know for a, for a little while and 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 sets up um, you know a good basement for the club and you know I mean getting back into Europe again tremendous the way it happened Arela scoring in the last minute you know um, you know really just where Rangers should be. Well, well on that. A couple of weeks ago, Jurgen Klopp was quoted saying, in his view, 
Stephen would be an ideal candidate in time to replace him. Can you understand why he said that and how much of a concern would that be if you're a Rangers supporter? No, I think the Rangers supporters are realistic. We knew when Stephen comes up here, if Stephen goes well, Liverpool will be the next uh, next stop on, on, on his career. But, you know, like we say, we, we're hoping, I'm hoping he's here for four, five, six years and, and, and build something here. But, you know, you want your manager to do well. You know, if the manager does well, the football club does well. So all Rangers supporters, including myself, want Stephen to do very well. And we full know that if he does well at this football club, he will go on to the next step. Uh, I don't know if Klopp should have said that, or I mean, it's a, it's a great compliment to, to Stephen, you know. That's uh, but like I say, he's learning the game at the moment, and this is a difficult place to learn the game because you lose one game, you have, you have to win every game. Because, uh, you know, like, I speak to him on a regular basis, and he and he and he, and he comes back. I mean, text wise, and he comes back right away, and he and he's been really respectful towards myself. Um, and, you know, I just, you know, I sent him a wee message after the old firm game, you know, like just saying that I would played in 50 of those games and you could never really tell how it was going to go. I says, so just win the next one. Just get, just get back on the thing and win the next one, you know. And that's all that matters at this football club. <coughs> um, how, how um, you know, you just got to win games, you know. I mean, I, I thought last year we played quite well in a lot of games and ended up losing them or dropping points. This year, maybe maybe three or four times, we haven't played that well. Maybe should have lost games and then ended up winning them. You know, so that's the difference, you know, for, for me. And it's only early on in the season yet, you know, so, um, but that's a distant, this, the, the difference this year. There's a wee bit more resilience, seems to be a bit more resilience about us, which is, which is good. Can I ask, when you, when you were going for nine in a row, that nine in a row season, how much more psychological and mental pressure did you feel in the dressing room? Because that's what Celtic are going for this year, of course. Mm -hmm. And how much did that play a part in the title race? Well, it was huge for me, especially the, the, the you know the senior players, you know the club at around that time. Myself being the captain of the club at that time it was um, it was thirty six cup finals. I always said that you know the nine in a row season was much much harder and a much more anxious season than going for 10 in a row. You know, 10 in a row, was, for me, was like a dream. It was, it was no problem. Nine in a row was, was, was difficult, you know, especially coming down the end when a few of us were falling. We, we, you know, a few of us were, were, were getting injuries at the end of that season and um, we stuttered over the line. We actually, we beat Celtic away from home at Parkhead and that should have been it, really. And then we started in after that, you know, because a few of us got injuries. We were getting Andy double up from Manchester, you know, Mark Haley coming in from QPR, you know, we, you know, we were, we, were, we were struggling over the line, you know, so it was a difficult season. Ten in a row, I was away then, came back obviously, but ten in a row was, was a walk in the park compared to nine in a row. Would you expect Celtic to feel that pressure as the season goes on, if this is a close title race? I don't know, because... It's a, it's a wee bit different because um, the nine in a row back then, no one ever had ever matched Celtics nine in a row. So this will be the second time, you know, you know, a redo. And whether we like it or not, we weren't in the league for four or five years, you know, and that's nothing to do, you know, that's not Celtics' fault. That's not nothing to do with anything. So it's, it's, it's a it's a bit different than the nine in a row this time, you know, um, I think anyway, you know, so. Um, Celtic got, you know, they proved the, to be the, the best team, the dominant team in Scotland over the last 10 years, as we were during that period. And it's simple because they've, they've, they've had better players. They've got, and they've got really good players, and um, like we had during that period. So um, Stevens put Rangers now in a position that um, to challenge, like Celtic did. With Van Hooydonk, Cadet, De Canio, Lambert, all the but, um, you know all the names that I can I can remember from from their good team with about three championships before we managed nine in a row before before we got there, they put a really good team together. Tommy Burns put a really good team together, you know. So 
Um, you know, they've still got a really good team, so but it's a bit different um, now to to um, what it was back then, you know. Richard, um, the national squad announcement today, um, what do you make of the national team at the moment? Um, Steve Clark, difficult, difficult job, you know. Um, I can just go back to my time, guys, you know, and when when I was playing um, for the national team, I was lucky enough to play 61 times for the national team. You know, I was a captain here. I was a captain at Tottenham. We were getting most of the players from the, the, the Premiership or the English First Division at Celtic and Men Rangers, the top players. Now, now, now we're getting a lot of the players from the Championship. Um, if you ask me who our best player is, it's maybe Robertson at Liverpool. Uh, obviously, Tierney, you know, playing at the top of clubs. But back in that day, I mean, I, I, I saw something on. Um, I was down there. I was visiting Costa Rica a couple of weeks ago, and um, I saw our team against Costa Rica, and we were all playing at the, in the 1990 um, in Italy, the World Cup, and we were all playing for top teams, and that's changed, you know. And do you think, uh, in terms of centre backs, do you think we've got good, good quality there? Uh, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not. I'm not um, I don't really want to say anything critical about the, 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 the players of today, but I was fortunate enough to play with Willie Miller, um, who was for me one of the best defenders Scotland's ever had. Um, Alan Hansen, Alec McLeish, we had a lot of good, we had a lot of good uh, players at that time in that position. You know, um, I mean, I was a centre back at that time, but played right back, you know, just to just to get a place in the team. You know, so. Um, you know, Stephen Stephen Clark's got a, a difficult job, but he, he'll do it to the best of the, his ability, and that, you know that's all, all he can do. And do you think then maybe a change of shape at the back, uh, change of shape at the back for the national team then? Um, Walter Smith, my old friend, uh, came in and took the the Scottish team, and he he set set us up quite defensively, and and we were very difficult to beat. You know, I think that's what. Stevens Kilmarnock side of last year was also difficult to beat. So, um, yeah, I think he'll he'll try and set up a, a defensive formation that makes us hard to beat, and that's what we've got to do. Even in my day, you know, people forget. Even in my day, we we set up, you know, like um, being hard to beat. I mean, I can remember playing at Hamden many times and getting played off the park possession-wise, but we were always very direct, and we can we we always had a goal in us, and um, whether it was from set pieces or getting the ball wide and into the box and had Morris Johnson and McCoy up front. So, but, you know, Kenny Douglas in my earlier days, so we were always going to score, you know. It just depended if we could keep the other team out. Richard, do you think uh, Lawrence Shanklin from your former club, Dundee United, should be in with the show? I think Shanklin should be in the, the Scotland team. Well, with the amount of goals he scored... Um, that's Stephen Clark's decision, though. It's, it's nothing to do with me sitting here. I mean, I've only seen him play live a couple of times. So, um, once was here with Air United. So, it's not for me to say that, that. But for a kid to score as many goals as he scored, you know, that um, he looks like a true goal scorer. You know. And just a quick one, just a quick one on the Rangers' defence. Obviously, being a former centre half, how impressed have you been with them at the back this season? I think it's eight of the last ten games they've kept clean sheets. Yeah, and that's what they've got to do. You know, I mean, it's not it's not just the defence; it's the whole team. You know, I always used to say, you know, you start your defending, your centre forward starts your defending. In my team, my centre forward started my defending, which was Ali McCoy started the defending, so that wasn't too good for us. But I mean, but realistically. When I when when I pressed as a team, it's all these new pressing comes into to to the manager's talks now. We used to press 30 years ago when I was playing, but it would start with the centre forward, and then we would all go, you know. So um, yeah, so it starts with a, it's not just the back four, but Steven Gerrard's got four good centre backs now. He needed cover in that position, and there's competition for places, which is really good. Um, so you know he's got four. Good centre backs, and uh, uh, like I say, competition for places, you know, it, it helps it, and it, and it's showing on the field.